still not looking at Yarno. Uh, you hear the deep voice of Graves mutter as he looks over at the squabbling group. Chorus fucking pawn. That boy is the one that got us into this mess. And, um, so, a lot just happened. What's happening? Uh, what, are you, what are you doing? Oh, boy. Uh, all right, so I'm assuming, A, we were all close enough to hear him say Chorus Pond. Yes, you go, he, 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 he stopped yelling at TF enough to say that. Like, he, he, and he said it kind of loudly. Okay. Hey, and Adrenaline Pump, man, he's pissed. He means the red face guy. Acker, uh, you, I mean, as someone that recognizes everyone else in that group, the prob- most likely the one that he you don't recognize is the one he's talking about. I don't think I recognize anybody. <laughs> you, yeah. oh no, Delstrom, sorry, you recognize uh, the red faced man. Uh, he's the guy you met on the boat. Hey, cool. my boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you recognize him. Graves says chorus fucking ponds, and then Deltrum just like my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Love that guy. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. Reminder that also, when, when... also random question: Did yeah. any of us see Yarno make his little theft move? I'm gonna say with that good of a fucking stealth check, no. Okay, okay, that's fair. That's he's, fair. He's quick. There's a lot of people. He's very small. Yeah, makes sense. And Ebrak just got just got attacked by a fucking ghoul. Hmm. That's another damn bilge water, though. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> uh, you guys sure. would have improved the bit anyway. It's fine. I, I would not. Have, I would not have no. Uh, yeah. if, if if everyone is, I would have told so... you. I would have told you those. It's like one of the few people you should not ever fuck with. An actual champion. <laughs> we just watched uh, him kill six ghouls at once. He's like, all right, this guy. on CD, on CD, we're fine. It's <laughs> not cool. Dad. Um. So, uh, feel free to do whatever you guys want to do right now. Uh, I have some stuff. If you guys are sort of like sort of caught up in the adrenaline of combat and don't really know what's going on. But I, I don't, I don't would want like to walk up to Graves. Yeah, I'm coming I'm all around these people. Because aren't these... How famous are Village Water people around, like, the rest of Runeterra? Besides uh, Village Water. Yarno, I would say you are aware of the existence of Sarah Fortune. You wouldn't okay. know what she looks like, but you know... I, yeah, you know... I said you know what she looks like. You know who Sarah Fortune is. Uh, you wouldn't know any of the other ones. Okay. Um, You're from Piltover, so you do actually know who Twisted Fate and Graves are. Like, you've heard... Uh, their their exploits are probably I I guess their exploits are decently famous. Well, I mean they've been for... to Piltover and on for like on like yeah. cri- on like criming. Um, yeah. But I mean how 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 involved in Yarno is, is with the police procedurals of fucking Piltover? Hey, uh, you know I had I mean, to get my you rolled low on that stealth check there. I yeah. I had to I had to get my permit, you know, for Yankees. All right, I'll, so. I'll say I'll say you're vaguely like you you're vaguely familiar with like these two famous uh Bilgewater uh criminals who. Uh, robbed the uh, eclectic volts in. Uh... And anybody who robs something or like you know, you know, checks out an ancient artifact, they're cool in my book. Okay, they're good. Um, so Akram, you wanted to real. go talk to Graves. Yes. Or to Malcolm and Tobias, I should say. Uh, okay. Uh, they're they're sort of like they've calmed down and they're squabbling and they're looking longingly into their eyes. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, not that. Uh, fuck, shit. Ah! Uh, <laughs> so uh, what do you do? Uh, I just wanted to walk up to Graves and say, do, do you mean the whole Phantom Ire thing? Uh, he's sort of, uh, he's like kind of tending to his destiny now. Shotgun goes, huh? Oh, yeah, that, uh, that boy's the one that brought it in the harbor. Why uh, did we let uh, that happen? <laughs> oh, he, uh, he, he came in with the icicle fellow over there. Doutrum, why don't we ask him? <laughs> Doutrum, got anything? I ignore Yarno. <laughs> do I do I know Corspond's first name and like No, you, you you did not remember his name, but you can you put you've put two and two together, I will say. You're you're not an idiot. Uh he's still arguing with everybody else, right? Yeah, they're like across the thing from you. They're you're not you're you're, you're still standing by the gate. They're like in the center of the plaza. And the plaza is it's not huge, but it's relatively big. I just sort of hummed myself and I uh, I guess I just chill for now. Hmm. And, uh, um, so to answer Akram's question uh, as to why uh, it was brought into harbor, uh, uh, t- uh, Tobias Felix uh, kind of shrugs and just goes, same reason as anything, a little bit of money. Have, have any of them, I mean, apart from this instant interaction with Arkham and Graves, have they, or, sorry, Akram and Graves, have, have they, has anybody else been mentioning the Phantom Eye? Have we heard that word at all? Uh, there, the there's there's various mutterings like going around, of, like everyone talking about, like, you hear you hear everyone kind of like, heroing Phantom Eye correspond okay. like everyone's everyone's everyone is very intently focused on the conversation happening in the middle of the plaza um that being said 
sort of a, as as there's kind of this just wall and cacophony of noise. Everyone's kind of like like paying attention to what's going on in the middle, and everyone's like talking amongst themselves. And you guys are talking to uh, Graves and Tobias Fate, uh, uh, TF, whatever. Deltrim, uh, roll an intelligence check. Uh, and if are you proficient in Arcana? Yeah, I am. Add I'm Arcana. Add, add, be. Add, add your add your proficiency in Arcana to that roll. Better be. Ooh, now I get a seventeen. <clears throat> Deltrim. The noise of the crowd fades for a moment, and it's like everything has gone slow. Your vision blurs a bit, and you feel a sort of magical haze attempting to set in, but you push it away. And across the crowd of people, you see a man. It's the Gaunt Man, the same you saw in the Low Side Temple. Silver cane, heavily bandaged arm, well-made sailor's coat that just seems too yeah. big on him, and you get a good look at his discolored hair and sunken green eyes. But everything else around him is a bit blurry and slowed. But you see this man clear as day. Do you do anything? Can I? Let me just start moving toward him. Does he like? Is he like looking at? Can he notice that I'm? So he's looking directly at you, and you feel unable to move. Oh my goodness! Unable to move? Like like you 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 go to move? Like you're yeah? I want to I want to walk away? And like everything around you is moving super slow, but he appears to be standing perfectly clear and normal. Like and uh, you're like your body you do go to move, but it's just it's just moving so slow. Am I able to talk? You can try. I try to talk, and by try to talk, I mean I go what what are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? You know, under my breath to make sure I can talk. I mean, sure, you can talk. What are you trying to say? (laughs) <laughs> huh I go what is this uh, so the gaunt man uh, sort of like he blinks a bit as you talk and uh, he gets a sort of wry smile across his face and responds with mm, ahead of the pack most impressive Deltrum and he points to the pocket of his uh, his pants tapping a thin, a thin finger against the side of the actual pocket itself um and, uh, Deltrum, you have this strangest feeling you've forgotten something. Like, you were about to do something, and you just suddenly couldn't remember what it was. Like, when you walk into a room and forgot why you came into that room. Uh, but you reach into your pocket as if something is forcing you to, and you retrieve a coin. One you certainly didn't have before, because someone else had it. It's just like the coin that Akram has, the one that the priest Briggs gave him down by the temple. You turn it over in your hand, and on one side of the coin is a woman wearing a shawl, and the other side bears a skull, with the symbol of the caretaker printed into the eyes. You stare at the coin, and you have a distinct feeling of... Wait, no. The feeling is gone. You're brought back to reality by the voice of Graves' companion, Tobias Felix, and you look back up to where the Gaunt Man was just standing, and he's not there. Ooh. Damn. Okay, uh, can to... I... Sure, you go ahead. What do you want to say? Can I, like, tap Akram's shoulder and, like, hold up the coin to him? Well, uh, TF was, was saying something to you. Are you, are you just disregarding what he was Yeah, you just saying. Oh, going. what was he saying? Uh, so, uh, uh, Tobias Felix uh, says, You all right there, Asmorn? I do just ignore him. and I, t- I <laughs> <laughs> Just like Riot. I'm, uh, I tap Akram and I sh- show him the coin. Okay. I, I'll look at the coin. I mean, it's looks, you notice. You notice it looks it, familiar. It, it appears to be the same coin that you have. Yeah, I'm gonna check my pockets. So uh, Akram was given that coin by Billy Briggs, the priest uh, down by the Low Side Temple, um, and uh, he said that that guy, the Gaunt Man, who you just saw, gave it to Briggs and said he would know what to do with it when the time comes. And uh, Akram forgot to return it to Briggs, or he just didn't return it to Briggs. I guess it's your your, your it's your call there. Um, Akram, you do in fact have a coin. Um, and so are so are you. Uh, are you actually are you handing the coin over or are you just kind of holding it up to him? I'm just holding it up. I'm definitely keeping a hold of this coin. Okay. So you hold the coin up to uh, Deltrum's and uh, you notice that the face of the woman in the shawl is slightly different. Uh, on uh, Akram's coin, she's facing absolutely one direction, like the p- a profile of a coin, like you'd see like a monarch or whatever. Uh, on Deltrum's coin, uh, she's turned a little bit more towards what you'd say is like facing you. Uh, and both of you are all perception check. 21. Okay, Akram? Or 20. Okay, you Damn! It, it, it not, a, not a natural 20. One you had to pass, it doesn't matter. So you notice on the skull side of the coin, uh, I guess you could call it tails if you want to, they're both heads, so it's kind of complicated. Um, huh? You notice that uh, Akram's coin appears to be more weathered and old-looking. Like, that side is more worn than Deltrum's. 
he has an older coin than I do. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know what to do with this. I, yeah, I, I say, where'd you get that, Deltrum? There, I, it was just in my pocket. Uh, there was that old man who gave you, who gave Billy Briggs Billy. that coin. I saw him here. He touched his pocket, and then this coin appeared in it. Appeared in your pocket, not Correct. his pocket. Okay, you weren't fishing in his pants. All right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you know who that uh, man was? I don't think I knew before. I'm assuming I don't know now. <laughs> Does anybody around here? We, I think we need to find out who that man was. Uh, did you ask that out loud? That last question. Uh, that, I said I both. Think he was I said talking to me. Loud, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Tobias, uh, who is still like you, know, he just kind of got brushed off by Adam, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> Elstrom, but he's still standing right there and just goes. Uh, what what man? I I turn and po I show him the coin. I what is this? Is what I say to him. Okay. So twisted fate. Uh, he takes it and he takes a good look at it and uh he turns it over in his fingers and uh he looks at the ba the the skull side of it and goes huh and then turns it back over his hand and looks at the face side of it and goes well I've seen a lot of coins but uh that ain't that ain't that ain't one I've ever seen before. Who you said who gave you this? It was a gaunt old man with sunken eyes a cane and a cane oh i can let akram say that i suppose yeah okay yeah, okay uh so uh tobias looks to malcolm and uh grave just kind of shrugs at it um and uh he returns the coin to you and goes huh well that's uh i mean i'll certainly keep my eyes peeled and ask around but i i can't say i i know him about that description and uh well i i feel kind of bad because i ain't for one for debts unpaid but uh not hell here uh, and he offers you what appears to be a playing card. Oh uh, shit! Oh wait, can I can I do like a like a can I roll like an Arcana check real quick or something? Sure. Let, let me roll an Arcana real quick. So you Adam brush him aside. Kinda... You brush him aside when he just wants to talk to you, but when he offers you a card, oh! I'm gonna stare. I'm gonna stare intently at him with magic. <laughs> I get a 14 for my check. All right, th this card is magical. <laughs> I take the card. All right. So as you take the card, you are almost compelled to look at it, and uh, you turn it over. So you have the he hands it to you like face down, basically, and you turn it over, and the face of the card is red, but something sort of overtakes you, and uh, you turn the card over again, and the side that used to be the card back is now also a face, and it's blue, and you flip it in your fingers one last time, and you're back on the original face side, and it's yellow. <gasps> and I'm stunned now. I say. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I say, what is this? <laughs> TF takes his hat off and kind of like brushes his hair back a little bit and then puts his hat back on and she goes, don't worry about what it does. Worry about what you need it to do. And uh, I just... And then uh, Graves, uh, Graves stands up from... Like suddenly stands up and he uh, puts his hand on TF's shoulder and, whis and uh, whispers something at him. And uh, every, every, who who is currently near these two? No one's walked away, right? Yeah. No. no I'm, I'm yeah. near them. Are they near MF? No, they're you're, no. they're like I would say you're like twenty ish feet of, away from Miss Fortune and uh, the the gang she's having an argument with. Actually, what's everyone's passive perception? I got a thirteen. Um, I don't know how, how do you determine that. It's ten plus your uh, modifier. Ten plus whiz modifier. Oh, mine's uh, nine then. <laughs> Mine is fifteen. Oh, so fourteen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm at eleven. I'm I'm. You are now fine. Thirteen. Uh, Yarno, so Yarno, Deltrum, and Akram, uh, you sort of hear barely what Graves is, is whispering to TF, and you overhear the uh, very clearly said gangplank and reaver. Uh, and you follow their eyeline, and uh, you see the the telltale purple coat of Tala Kenton uh, dashing down a side street off of Butchard's Plaza. Um, and you look back to uh, sort of opposite of the, where she was just, uh, where like she was running from, basically, and it's the center of the uh, plaza and the conversation. And her mother, the priestess Nalot Kenton, uh, who was who is currently still talking to uh, Miss Fortune and the gang, uh, is looking over to where Tala just was, and then just kind of looks down at her feet and shakes her head and returns to the conversation. But uh, meanwhile, uh, Ibrak. Yeah. Uh, Ibrak, uh, roll a Arcana check. I know you're not going to be good at that, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, I rolled a natural sixteen. Okay. Wow. Um, so you hear a voice calling from the back of your mind, um, and you actually almost instantly can sort of detect it. 
Uh, it's coming from right by your feet, and it's coming from that undead you uh, that charged you. But more particularly, awesome. <laughs> it's coming from the shoulder piece of that undead that charged you. Another, another, bring me another. It growls, and you feel strangely drawn to it. It's a jagged shoulder plate made of castaway hooks and barbs and fishing line, and it looking like it could just barely be strapped to your shoulder by the chains attached to it. But it feels powerful and much stronger than a worn-out, shoddy piece of armor should be. Do you take it? Uh, hell yeah. Okay, you've acquired the dead man's plate. Whoa! Hey. Oh, wow. <laughs> what the... <laughs> okay, so uh, the dead man's plate is a shoulder piece uh, that does not invalidate the unarmored barbarian trait, uh, but oh. also provides no AC. This thing doesn't look like it could take a hit. It is... It, it looks more ornamental than actually like a piece of armor. Um, this jagged shoulder plate is made of castaway hooks and barbs. Wearing the shoulder uh, piece, if you take the attack action on your turn, you can use a bonus action to try and shove a creature within five feet of you. Oh, that's it. The shoved creature takes uh, 1d8 piercing damage. They must then succeed a, a strength save equal to the strength of the user. If they do not tie or pass, they are knocked prone. This action can also be treated as a rushing attack, charging any enemy within 15 feet and performing an attack against them. If successful, the attack deals a bonus 2d8 uh, piercing damage oh to, the, to, to the target, God. and they are knocked prone. On a fail, uh, you deal no regular attack damage, but deal 1d8 piercing damage. This uh, this uh, bonus action this, uh, this action consumes movement and attack. I'm going to go ahead and post this for you so you can pop it on your character sheet. That's very yeah. good. You can right. attack and then push, right? So it's a bonus action. So he ha if he hasn't used his bonus, a bonus action, yeah, he can okay. basically attack and then slam them with the dead man's blade. That's so sick, though. It's basically a advanced shoulder guard that has tech. Of course, he knows what his does, and I'm just fucking over here. Oh, thanks for the colorful card, bitch. If you Fuck don't want you. it, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm not thanks giving it away. Thanks for the colorful card. You know, if you don't want the card, I'll take it, dude. No, nah, that's nah, okay. That's okay. You offered me something. I helped him out back there. I think you got a little something. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I had to work hard for my something. Um, was looking you got around. shot. Where's That's all you fuck? did. You got something for it. So while Ebrak is uh, looting a corpse, uh, what what's going on with the rest of you guys? I mean, I'm 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 taking this all. In. I'm trying to like distinguish what's going on here and some of the major players because right. these guys are somewhat like almost like celebrities, kind of like minor celebrities. Yeah. Least. So uh, Graves uh, notices the honor that you're looking at him. And uh, he kind of like looks down at you a little bit, and uh, he takes a, fr a fresh cigar from his uh, his stash and lights it up. Uh, and uh, he goes, "Hey, short stack, let me take a look at that uh, pea shooter of yours." Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll hand it over. All right, so you hand he's up. He's gonna get an upgrade. Uh, he's uh, he like lifts it up, and uh, he kind of like he's messing with it as like and he's like kind of rough with it, kind of like careful, bending it. Careful and, about that. It's it's uh, I got it pumped over a while ago. Please. Does it please. have a, Does it have a scope on it? Yes. He flicks the glass of the scope a little bit. <laughs> and he goes, mm, not much of a weapon for Bilgewater there. So it's probably tiny in his hands, too. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a wide man. Uh, yeah. Graves has got big hands, juicy hands, kind of <laughs> sexy hands. <laughs> God, awful. He goes, uh, let me just... Uh... And uh, he begins to mess with the mechanisms of your bolt sniper. Uh, he removes something from his coat. It's the same brassy color as his shotgun Destiny. And uh, he attaches it to your gun. Well, attaches is a loose term. Uh, with a firm smack of his hand on on the back of it, and then kind of like elbowing it into place, he sets whatever the hell he just attached to your gun into place. There you go. Uh, uh, that ought to punch the mist back a little bit. Uh, just uh, don't shake it around too hard. And he hands the gun back to you. He puffs, and then I like take it and I uh, obviously fiddle with it uh, and try to decipher what the hell this guy Sorry, just did to did my you, gun. Did you say thank you, puffs? Yeah. He goes, uh, <laughs> don't mention it. And I He mean, called me short stack. What? You're <laughs> fucking two feet tall. And he smokes a cigar. I think we're on <laughs> equal terms right here. That's fair. He goes, uh, don't mention it. And, uh, I, I mean that. I don't need people knowing I had some washer shorts saving my hide out there. <laughs> and don't call me puffs. Uh, Yarno, you have acquired, uh, Graves' perfectly safe Hextech modification trademark trademark. Whoa. Uh, I love it. Uh, oh yes, perfectly safe. <laughs> go ahead, and, go ahead and post this in the chat for you, and then I'll read it out for the kids at home. 
Graves Hell is perfectly yeah. safe hex modification. Uh, before you make an attack with a ranged weapon that you are proficient with, uh, you can choose to take a negative five penalty to the attack roll. If the okay. attack hits, you add plus ten to the attack's damage. Oh my god! Wow. Inaccurate death shot. I yeah, but if it. I if I aim, oh my god! If you aim, okay. you will take the negative five to both uh, advantage rolls. Yes. Yeah. I, I assume it's all the advantage rolls. I yeah. Yeah. All the all the attack rolls. But yeah, you yeah, mean yeah. obviously higher. It's just harder to hit. It's harder to hit, but I have an advantage on yes. it. Yes. Okay. Law, law of high numbers. Yep. Um. Okay. So. Uh, That's insane. Uh, Holy Yar shit. Yarno has been uh, has gun tinkered with by Graves. Uh, what are we doing, gang? We still have the argument going on in the middle of town, and we did see uh, Tala Kenton run down the side street there. Crazy. As a native build rat. Mm -hmm. Um. What seems more important, Gangplank or the Misfortune Conversation? I mean, I, I'm going to say, especially for you, the conversation with Misfortune. Because she's I was going to say, we, we oh, know yeah, that. she's talking to the priest. We also she's, did the... And we know that corresponds over there, right? We do know. We, so, yeah. I mean, you you can almost 85% assume that the fat guy is Correspond. Uh, the And then, uh, Akram, yes, you know, you recognize, and uh, Ibrak, you recognize Nalat Kenton, who is one of the head priestesses of uh, Nagakuburos in the city. Basilio audibly says to everyone, we know the ghosts want it back. That's all they keep saying. We know Correspond had whatever it is. Let's just go rough him up, ask him where it is, go get it, and give it back. You know, that seems very reasonable. Okay. So you guys are... Uh, are, are sounds, um, good. sounds good to me. Okay, so are you approaching the, the group, or are you just rushing Correspond? <laughs> Uh, I mean, honestly, after all of the shit that's happened in the last literal 20 minutes, I... Don't see why Basilio wouldn't uh, kind of break his normal, cool conditioning and just grab, grab correspond by the. Uh, the would scrub you? Of would you shirt. actively tear him out of the conversation? Yeah, by, they're, tw they're by twenty by feet map. away as well. Remember? So you, you 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 have to march over there and then grab him. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm I'm all for this interaction. Sprints through oh, the crowd. Chorus. I think no, no. I think I think he's like huffing, puffing, wide stepping, and just like anime grabs the guy by the scruff of his neck. <laughs> Okay, Jeezel, right in front of MF, right? Yeah, well, everybody's pissed at him, right? Everybody's talking to him. I mean, they're they're having they're having a tense conversation, but no one is like getting physical. Do I see this happening? And can I stop this from happening? Uh, I will. Yeah, I mean, you can. Uh, give me a strength check, strength check to stop Basilio from rushing over. Versus Basilio? Okay. Uh, yeah. Wait, but, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. D to be fair, I'm not trying to like stop you guys from doing the strength check. You have no idea what he's gonna do. He might be just walking up. He walk. did just say, "How about yeah. we just go rough up?" Oh, wait. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Uh, All right. Do so, whatever you uh, want, let's Ibrak. just do. Let's do a strength contest. I didn't know. He, I, I forgot he said that out loud. Okay. Strength I contest. Gonna... Ebrac and Basilio to stop Basilio from rushing across the thing and decking this guy. I, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm I know, I know, I'm I know, I know, I know, I know. But yeah, I, I only rolled a thirteen, so I think you're gonna beat me. I rolled a fourteen. Damn! Oh, well, shit. Right. So you, so Basilio turns to like go over there, and I'm, oh, I'm gonna get him. And uh, Ibrak grabs him by the arm, and Ibrak, you're kind of flexing that 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 uh, that new shoulder oh piece. God. You're feeling good, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you grab Basilio, and do you say something? Wait, Sarah Fortune's over there. Don't do anything too stupid. So the only thing that's that's more stupid than than standing here is not doing anything at all. I'm not I'm saying thinking. do nothing. I'm just saying don't piss off the leader of this town. Uh, Basilio grumbles and like throws his arms down like a child who's been told off. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to throw this to Ebrak and Akron. You guys sort of know know the city and you know sort of like the uh, social etiquette stuff. So what what what? How, do you guys want to approach the conversation or what are you doing here? Oh, I have no problem with going over and trying to talk to him and get him out of the conversation. I'm just not going to deck someone who's in a conversation with misfortune and other important people. Yeah, okay. I, I know who not to piss off. Okay. And uh, Akram, do you have any thoughts on this matter? Uh, I want to approach, but from the side of the head priestess. So just kind of like walk up to her side as if I'm like, okay. you know, ready for orders or something. Again, out of any out of anyone in this group to understand how Bridgewater works, I obviously trust Akram. So if Akram is going to start heading in a direction, I'm going to follow behind him. Question. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Is Alawi in town right now? Uh, she. Uh, sorry. Uh, is she physically in the city, as far as you're aware? Yes. Yes. But she's not here. You don't see her. Okay. You don't. That's <laughs> probably not good. You don't. You don't. You don't see. You don't see the six-five bodybuilder hanging around now. Yeah, it's Basilio. 
if he was, you know, impressive cool. at all. Uh, that's... Uh, Nalak Kenton actually looks up, and uh, she sees Akram, and she sort of nods away from the conversation, and she you see her say something, and then she steps to the side. Okay, I will approach her then. Uh, and I have to fucking read an Irish voice here, because fucking Tala's got Irish. God damn oh it. Oh my god. <laughs> um, you did it to yourself. I fucked myself, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> Akram, she greets, greets you with a familiar and quite motherly tone. Uh, I'm glad to see you made it. It seems many of the others were not so lucky. Uh, what of Alawi? I have not seen her, but... And then she looks up to the sky, and um, sort of through the, the hanging mist that uh, is hiking over the city, there's one uh, star that you can see even through the dark clouds and all that stuff. Uh, the eye of the Kraken burns bright in the sky. She's still with us. I'm certain of that much. Oh, that's good. Uh, <laughs> what news of corresponds and what we need to send back? Akram, I would not ask this of anyone besides a Lowie under normal call. I, would, I wouldn't find myself strong enough to ask, but I fear this might be the last harrowing the Serpent Isles see. Unless we, unless we act quickly. If, Akram, if the Mother Serpent sent you to me at this time, I have to believe it's to ask you something. That man, he, he brought something into the city he shouldn't have. And, Akram, I don't know how to say this. Please save Bilgewater. Please return the Phantom Eye to Nagakaboros. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's a that's so, tall uh, ass. So but N- if... Nalot, Nalot, uh, you you get a better look at her now, and she is, she looks bad. She looks like she's been crying. Uh, she, her she's sort of like almost shaking, just standing there in front of you, and um, she keeps looking nervously over at the temple and like other the other priests that are doing stuff, looking back to misfortune and Chorus Pond. She's not having a, a great a great time, and her also her gaze keeps wandering over to the path that Tala went down, and kind of like lingering there for a second and like sort of snapping back to the conversation as if she remembers you know what the fuck's going on. Ah uh, well, if the Kraken wills it. So uh, she goes, I, I realize it's a lot to ask, but, uh, and she once again looks back to the temple and then uh, she pulls something from uh, sort of like her, ch- her like priestly garb. It's like attached a chain to her hip and she holds up uh, what you recognize as a, a draft of light. So this is a, it's like a lantern, basically. It's a sealed container with a hook on the top for basically holding it like and attaching it. Um, but it's sealed on all sides with a cap from the top. Uh, it looks almost like a lantern that doesn't cast any light. Um, and, you know, this is what uh, the Baru people uh, use to carry pure distilled essence of light. And she offers it up to you. This has been the charge of our people since before the ruination. And in times of great need, it's been known to save more than lives. So p- please take it. I take it. Akram, you would try the Draft of Light, a sealed can- canister of pure light, considered uh, a holy charge by the brew. Um, could, could you accept it any less enthusiastically? Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> no, there, there's more concern that I'm going to die, honestly. So, hey. um, <laughs> you, you, you've never personally it's... used or even held pure light, but you're well aware of its use and uh, the brew tradition of people returning light to the Shadow Isles. Uh, there are these beacons of uh, light that exist in the Shadow Isles that uh, brew will go and light, and that is said to help repel or at least weaken the spirits of the Shadow Isles. Um, that's yeah. why i'm not too thrilled about this guy. if you guys if you guys don't want if you guys don't like any of your trinkets you know i'll take them off them for a small oh fee freaking god Yinket is not getting any of my trinkets all right also for you we have to pay you a small for you to take them from no, us i'll pay you guys uh, okay. I'll trade you some currency <laughs> also um, uh i know how much you guys love money did briggs make it and so as you say that uh uh and, and a lot's eyes go wide and she qu- quickly looks around like back and forth and um, she just goes, oh, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to pull out the, the weathered coin and, and uh, show okay. it to her. Um, so she looks at the coin um, and uh, she sort of brings her hand up to her chest as if like someone, someone would do as a gesture of like their breath being taken from them. And she goes, oh, you saw him too, did you? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what he wanted. I really don't. But. He tried to talk to Alawi. She wouldn't hear him. And then she ran off after him all of a sudden. I, I, have, I haven't seen her since. Well, he told Briggs he'd know what to do with this when the time came. But, uh, 
I forgot to return it to Briggs. So I have it. I was hoping he would know what to do with it. Uh, she recites to you a uh, Baru proverb. Um, when uh, when things wash ashore, they're meant to be in a certain place. I hate this religion. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I need to take this trout of light? Don't, don't use it if you don't have to. S- save it, save it for when you really need it. But look, Miss F- Miss Fortune would have the ship scuttled and sent back to sea, uh, and you, you know as well as I, the former Reaver King, he has supported the Brew, allow me mostly, but. This stupid squabble of power is it's nothing but driftwood in a storm compared to the grip of the mist. My daughter, she's she's gone to see Gangplank, and as as a mother I hope I hope she's right, but as a warden of Nagakaboros, I I have to tend to the people. If you wish to see speak with Captain Fortin, Fortune, I'll have her hear what you know. But if you seek the Reaver King, please do make sure Tal does not do anything more reckless. I mean they both want to sink that ship, but I think it's just a matter of they have different ideas of how to do it, and what's right. What different ideas do they have? Um, so she uh, looks once again at the path where Tala went and sort of shakes her head and shrugs a little bit. I I can't know what the what the Captain Gangplank wants, but I know he respects what we tend to do, at least on the more often. But the captain's not here, and Captain Fortune is, and she's the one that actually wants to go and do something. I I don't know what the Reaver King has has planned. I can say that uh, Captain Fortune wants to send someone down to the ship and send it back to the sea. As far as I know. Uh, I hate to ask this of people I've mostly just met, but will you help me? <laughs> Please. Uh, I mean, Basilio steps up and is like, what, what's the plan? We need to get the Phantom Eye back to the Shadow Isles, back to the sea. Where it belongs. Sounds to me like there's two different plans on how to do so. Which one are we taking? The Reaver King's been pretty good to my people, so Alawi and I I trust him a little more than Misfortune. And Gangplank, and Gangplank is much more in line with he he's more religious, to put it simply, than Misfortune is. He's correct? also he's also more old world, I would say. Uh, that yeah. being said, uh, Gangplank is of officially no power, and in fact, he's technically dead. But it's it's common knowledge that he is in fact not. Okay. Uh... <sighs> As a okay, but Misfortune is in power. She might be able to help us more in the, at this point in time too. And she's also physically in the room. And physically here, yep. <laughs> Which is, I mean, that's my only perspective is like, hey, we can literally just ask her, hey, what can you do for us? Whereas Gank, like, we got to find him and then probably blow up a ship, which may be not as nice as just pushing a ship back into, you know, out of port. I mean, they, they both might want to blow it up. something pretty sure. devious there, too. That's fair. He's in, a position of, he's in a position of no power, so maybe if we help him out, you know, she could ask anything from well, us. If Misfortune loses Bilgewater, she'll have no power either, so. If the heroine kills us all, no one has any power. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ebrak. So. <laughs> worth, worth, worth noting. Misfortune or Gangplank? Uh, I think we just vote, right? Yeah, it's fine. That's, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. Five, uh, five votes? Perfect. Um, uh, yeah. uh, it's like probably like one of our biggest choices, I assume, that you've mentioned before. Like, which one kind of, like, are we going to side I, I, with? I'm, I'm going to break the fourth wall here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think of, like, what my character would do. I don't know who GP even is. The only the only way you would know him outside of Bilgewater, other than as a pirate, is the guy who's running Bilgewater. Okay. I mean, I, counterpoint, there's a literal living legend right in front of you. Yeah. Yes, and and, yeah. and obviously, Misfortune is known in the same ilk. She is the person in charge of Bilgewater. Along okay. with, like... She she's the uh, she's the face of it, but like also uh, Ibrak and uh, Akram, you know that uh, Captain Band there and Sheriff uh, Rose are also like of no. I know power. Who, I know who I want to help, but I know who my character probably would help, and they're different mm-hmm. people. Then I, I I mean obviously I'm gonna say go with the character. Yeah, character, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Know. All right. I mean, here's I would, the thing: we, we haven't we haven't spoken at all to Misfortune, but Basilia would go with her just because she's here and it's. I'm, I'm picking MF because she's a known 
person. All right, so are we going to be voting in character now, or? Yeah, let's do this. Uh, we're, we're all together, I assume. Yes, and, we're all together. You're all together. Yep. Uh, Basilio just says, okay, on three, all those in favor of. Oh, Ms. let's Ford. not all talk at the same time. Bas let's not do that. Basilio's vote is. <laughs> Misfortune. Ibrak. Fortune's right in front of us. The sooner this gets done, the better. Yarno. I don't even know who this other pirate schmuck is. Like, he could just be any old nobody. I see a legend right here. Delstrom, just for the sake of voting, go ahead. Well, like, we're voting on a thing. We could be jumping into this first and at least going over and saying, hey, uh, or not even saying anything, just listening into their conversation. If Miss Fortune's like, hey, we need to get the boat back, then we're like, okay, MF. Yeah, what if she's like, hey, we need to blow this shit. I need to kill one of your friends to do this job. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I feel like we don't have to make the decision right this second, but so in so character, so I probably so just like, home. Oh. Celia so says, I don't know, Delstrom, you spent the last 20 minutes flipping over a card, looking at it changing colors. <laughs> I was Could've doing it doing so fast, else. it was just like flashing in front of me. It looked really cool. So Dutchram, Dutchram says, we don't need to vote now, but I guess whatever, fuck. Essentially, <laughs> but cooler and less at, least, at the very least, we should stand here and hear what Miss Fortune has to say. We shouldn't go running. We shouldn't go running after. We shouldn't go running after the girl. Is still like. Yeah. What is her? What, it depends on what her offer is. If she says, "Hey, like you're gonna like join my crew for the rest of eternity," I'm like, ah, I don't know about that. Very well. Let's talk to Miss Fortune. Okay, so uh, the team approaches uh, the conversation, which is now between uh, Captain's Band, Fortune, uh, Sheriff Rose, and uh, Chorus Pawn. Um, so Captain's Band and Fortune are still talking, but the Sheriff has seemed to have gone quiet. Uh, she is actually looking at the rest of you while everyone else is talking. The large man, Chorus Pawn, as Graves noted, uh, urgently notes, y you have to let me go to the ire, or, or rather... If you and your soldiers would be so kind as to escort me there, I I, I assure you I can sort this out. Uh, Captain Ban is actually the one who responds, uh, stomping his foot and snapping up Pawn. I've had more than enough of you, Sarah. Damn it all. Gather every gun in the upper city. They want it. Sent it back. Let's send the damn thing back already. Uh, Miss Fortune removes her hat and sighs, uh, looking from Chorus uh, to Ban. <sighs> Captain, we have no way of knowing that won't just make things worse or that it won't anger the spirit even more. We need to scuttle the ship, I agree, but whatever's on it, we need to get that off, and need be, return it to the mist. Uh, Cora stumbles over himself, sort of saying, we, we, we can't just return it! Um, and uh, uh, Nalat uh, sort of brings you guys into the conversation, and she mentions something to Miss Fortune, and uh, MF uh, turns to you guys and uh, says, You lot survived the heroin then, huh? So far, can we turn the thing back yet? <laughs> And uh, she looks back to Chorus, and he just goes, "Oh, okay. The, the thing they want—it's it, it, a box. It's on—it's on the ship. My my brother was the one to find it, and we believe the item is the uh, let's just say the effects of the Ruin King himself. Uh, it was a ship, I think, uh, prepared that prepared for his escape before the ruination took. And among those effects, well, uh, an, an item to control death itself. And he kind of like looks down at his feet, like." <laughs> We definitely need to give this back. Uh, yeah. Yes, we I, 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 I growl at Chorus Pond. He, he, he's this man is sweaty. He's not having a good time, and he's like, I, I, he's he, he's clearly understanding that everyone's about to kick his shit in. I turn to you back and I say, yarn "Can yarn I run this, this guy up now?" Um, I would like to use thaumaturgy. That's uh, Ooh. I believe magic via divine prayer. Uh, it's. I manifest a minor wonder as a sign of supernatural divine power. For, uh, sure, let's do it. The one that the the way that I would like to do this is my voice booms three times as loud as normal for up to a minute. <laughs> okay, I like this. <laughs> I would like to look corresponds dead in the eyes and yell directly in his face. You would doom the entirety of Bilgewater. So that you can get this box that you stole from the dead. Man, Rocky, make your own intimidation check. That was dope. Um, <laughs> uh, and he sort of steps back and uh, is like terrified of you. Uh, but Sheriff Rose actually steps in between you. Uh, not not as if she's like supporting Chorus, but clearly as like a yo, you need to back the fuck up and chill kind of situation. She doesn't say anything though. She's just staring at you uh, with her uh, very stern looking eyes. I'll, uh, and her big dumb my, hat. Bring my voice back down to, to normal. And just uh, say, why are we even talking to this man anymore? 
Uh, he wanted us to send soldiers with him to retrieve his box. That is the actual cause of this. Uh, and uh, Sarah Fortune nods at this, and uh, she she looks over to you, uh, and uh, she actually knows your name. Uh, Akram, I, uh, I'm, I'm inclined to agree. Uh, we're not saving this ship, and we're not bringing anything back off of it. At least, we're not bringing whatever the hell is in that. We're not, we're not bringing that box back off it. Now, I would like if you would be interested in, and I, I, of course, the city of Bilgewater will repay you a- anything you want. Uh, money, a ship, way out of here, a house. We can we can make that happen for you. I think if, Vasilia has been mentioning getting out of here since I came say, here. Is that, I'll, I'll take the way out, please. <laughs> uh, if you go down there and you scuttle this ship, and if, and only if, and she looks over at Pawn, if whatever's on that ship is retrievable, I- I'll leave that up to your discretion. But scuttle that Ship. Make it back alive, you can name your price, and the city will pay it. Deal. Man, I wish I wasn't a cleric for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, out of character, my ass knows there's going to be a Blade of the Ruined King on there, which is going to be really good for Basilio, but... <laughs> out of character. I would bet on shit, Chief. Yeah. <laughs> out of character you're going home in a body bag that's the way you're going home dude i'm getting that morellos dude the morello nomicon <laughs> is mine dude <laughs> all right uh i mean i'm in let's i've already been asked by nagaka 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 boros there you go to take on this task i'm doing it and not, not, i want, not, not I want really the like heroin to stop and i just got told this is a very lucrative job <laughs> 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 I get to not die and be rich. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of it's sort of turning out it's sort of turning all my I can, be a, I can be a, I can be a hero once again. I'm like that stupid Ezreal. Hate that fucking guy. <laughs> Hate that guy. Uh Deltram, you in? I shake my head. Or I nod my head. Say no. Shake my head no. <laughs> I'm, gonna go hang, I'm gonna go hang out with those pirates over there and get fucking shwasted. Deltrum's like no, and then just spider climbs up the temple. <laughs> like, I'm out of here. He still has it. It's, it's, still has it. it's an hour. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> See you later, fuckers. All right. I just play with this card. Uh, so I'm gonna say that you guys are sort of like doing like a group huddle to decide this. Yeah, um, I mean, I I just growl deal, so... Alright, so yeah, uh, it's sort of like a group with you guys at NMF, and uh, it corresponds to kind of like, on the outside, like, trying to like, oh, you guys are gonna do it? Um, Captain Band um, is sort of like standing off his side, but he's like nodding. He's cool with it. Um, uh, but Basilio, as you are sort of like talking to the pack, you feel a tap on your shoulder, and uh, it's Sheriff Lariat, uh, Lariat Rose, and uh, cool. she sort of pulls you aside. And uh, she's, uh, she grabs you by the arm as if she's, like, doing, like, a, a deep handshake, like, one of those, like, on-the-arm handshake kind of situations. Uh, mm-hmm. And she looks you up and down, sort of studying you. And then she just goes, you're not supposed to be here. It's not a question, but it's more of an observation. And she goes to her side and uh, unclips one of the swords from her, uh, like, uh, belt loop uh, and sort of, like, offers it over to you. Not, like, clearly. Like, she's, like, almost hiding it. Uh, I mean... Basilia says, in response to your statement, finally, somebody gets it. I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> uh, but but seriously, what, what's up with the sword? Let this be the last thing you take from here. Do not die here, Warden of the Path. And she steps really close, whispering the next few words. Ishtal heeds the untall, not an empress. Whoa! <laughs> Basilio got chills? He is... He is as jacked as he can be, and he instantly suppresses that and then says, Ishtal forever, and he takes the blade. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. Okay, um, so the sheriff does not respond to that stupid thing you just said. Uh, she, uh, uh, Sher- sheriff Rose uh, steps away and pulls her long brim hat down uh, to kind of to obscure her face, and she recuses herself from the conversation. She just walks the fuck away. Bill- and- Basilio, you have acquired a Bilgewater Cutlass. Oh hey, uh, the Bilgewater Cutlass. Uh, it is you, a one. You love Bilgewater so much. Uh, your 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 current sword is a one d eight, correct? Uh, correct. Yeah. Uh, this is a one d eight plus one on hit. Uh, and enemies hit by the Bilgewater Cutlass have their move distance reduced by ten feet. Uh, once per day, and that's only once. Fuck you and your multiple timeline bullshit. Uh, Basilio can attempt uh, att- uh, an attempt and attack with the Cutlass. Uh, you gain plus one on the attack roll as well as the hit. 
Uh, if it hits, the uh, en the enemy t uh, enemy hit takes two d8 damage and is slowed. Uh, Red. Slowed is the effect we mentioned in the very first episode. Um, it basically makes you take a later turn in the turn order than what you would take normally. Cool. Pretty cool. Awesome. Use the sword and a recurve bow. We don't even need to go get the blade of the ruin. King will just have it. <laughs> we just we just <laughs> just just stick it together, and then you you, you pull the bow and you shoot the sword. <laughs> you just get some masking tape, tape them together, and suddenly you. The blade of the ruined king. That's how items work. Uh, so, uh, Miss Fortune sort of like claps her hands together and is like, all right, we got a game plan going here. And uh, Captain Ban speaks up. The only uh, safe way down to the port would be through the through the sluice way, I reckon. It's a, it's a straight shot down to the harbor and the ire. I'll, uh, I'll walk y'all over. Chorus, give me that goddamn key. And uh, he walks over to Chorus and like Chorus has like what is clearly a, you know, it's a big fucking key. And he just yanks it off of him and he uh, hands it over to Akram. Um, I'm assuming this is the key to the ire or to the warehouse. It's too so uh, a kill house isn't just like a warehouse. It's like a whole yard for like various. Like you bring a, sh a ship in, you unload the 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 scrap or the whatever the fuck. You hack it up, you take it off to its various places. It's like a bit. It's like an area. Got it. it mm -hmm. There is a, a a warehouse is part of the kill house yard. Got it. Um, okay. And uh, so uh, Nalat actually walks over now and uh, she raises her hands and uh, everyone is fully healed. Hey. Um, this uh, treat this treat this as a long rest. Don't worry about it right now because we're about to end the episode. Thank um, goodness I get my rages back and I get rid of my one level of exhaustion. So uh, as you guys are uh, ready to go, Band uh, agrees he will show you down to a grate that leads to the sluice way. Uh, but um, <clears throat> you all stand there in, in the in the plaza, and for a second it it feels pretty okay. Almost like you're standing in the eye of a storm, and the mist almost clears around you guys. Uh, it's not fully gone, but it feels just a little, little safer, a little better. Um, unlike how you guys felt when the mist poured into Bilgewater, the five of you don't feel that familiar chill of the harrowing lingering on your back. You don't feel that creeping feeling of the mist hanging over your heads. The five of you, you guys feel ready. Ooh. And everyone levels up! Oh. And we'll handle all that shit next week.